name is Adam Winrich, and this video is about how I make juggling whips. Uh, this uh, whole set of whips right here is going to go to Aaron Bonk. He has several of them, and these are going to be some backups for the whips that he's juggling. Now, a common question would be, what makes these juggling whips? Well, first, basically, they're just a short bull whip, uh, three foot ten inches long with a ten inch handle. And what makes them unique as far as juggling whips is that uh, Aaron himself has had a lot of input into the refinement of the design. So this has become his preferred whip to juggle. He can juggle other whips, but uh, he's made a lot of adjustments to this design so that he can juggle them. And you may be wondering if I can juggle them. Well, I sure can. Check it out. If you thought my attempt at juggling was lame, you would be right. Anyway, I'm not the juggling expert, I just like cracking them. But I'd like to give uh, everyone out there a little bit more information on how these are made. Uh, first, uh, some things about it. This design is inspired by a guy named D.T. King of Coyote Whips. I got one of his whips about 15 years ago. I don't think he's making whips anymore. One of the unique things about his whips is that he braided all of his whips from the point, starting with a twist, and then it would come up to about a 10 or 12 plat braid, braiding towards the point, and then he'd put a sort of extra overlay over the handle to kind of bulk up that area. And his whips aren't waxed, so neither are these. And I start out with a two strand twist, and I go from two to four to six, up to eight to 10 strands, and then 12, 14, and then I had another strand to make it 16 plat here in the handle. And so that's a rough idea of how they're made. Uh, now I'll show you how the insides of the whips are made. All right, here's all the pieces that go on the inside of the whip. I start out with a 10 inch piece of fiberglass rod. This is 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. That's the handle foundation. And then I cut three lengths of ball chain. I do a one foot two foot, and then three foot lengths of ball chain. And then I'm gonna cut uh, four lengths of parachute cord. Uh, two of them are gonna be six foot long, and the other two are four foot long. You see they get doubled over. And then so all of this gets bound very tightly onto the handle. And then once I get to the end of the handle, I got these sort of eight pieces of parachute cord, and these have the core taken out. And then uh, once I've bound to the end of here, I'll add these in and bind them around to add a little bit of bulk for when the uh, core comes off the handle. I bind those a little bit, and uh, the longest one of those gets trimmed to about four inches, and they get trimmed back. And then from, let's see, between, basically from the end of these to the end of the two foot length of ball chain, I trim out four of the lengths of parachute cord with the guts left in. So those get trimmed out about every two inches, evenly spaced. And then I've got four pieces of paracord left between the end of the two foot section and the three foot section. And those get evenly spaced out and trimmed at about uh, oh, two and three eighths of an inch. And then, uh, so that's all handles bound together. And then I take some artificial sinew and I'll, uh, once I've trimmed all those core strands, I'll go ahead and do a binding all the way down and all the way back to hold everything in place when I start braiding. So I'm gonna show you a video of what the uh, whole bound together core looks like, or sorry, a photo rather. And then I'll show you a video of how I start braiding from the point, because uh, I'll actually start braiding about, um, I'll braid about 10 inches of parachute cord starting toward the end, and then I'll insert the very end of the uh, ball chain here, which is of course bound into everything, and then I can continue braiding all the way up to the handle. <laughs>
are some additional notes and tips on cutting the strands for the overlay and braiding them. So to start at the point, uh, I've actually cut uh, four strands that are all 15 feet long and then I double them all over. And then I do a two strand twist for two and a half inches and then up to four plat for two and a half inches, six plat for two and a half inches, eight plat for two and a half inches, and then I, that should be 10 inches, then I add the uh, core strand or the whole core build that I've done. And then I will keep braiding up over that and then I will add another strand to go up to 10 plat at 14 inches. And then add in another strand doubled over at 19 inches to go up to 12 plat. And uh, kind of with these uh, 10 and 12 plat strands and all the other strands I add, I just sort of measure them based on how much length I have left from these first four strands. So I'll braid these and then I'll just cut a strand and I'll see how much I need to stretch all the way to the end of my loose strands and then cut something twice as long as that and double it over. So again, uh, 10 plat at 14 inches, 12 plat at 19 inches, and then I come up to 14 plat at about uh, 29, 30 inches, and then I'll add the 16 strand, or the one strand to come up to 16 strands uh, at the handle. Well, that was a short video explaining how I put together juggling whips in the style preferred by Aaron Bonk. If you have any questions, you can email me at info at winrichwhips.com. And if you've enjoyed the videos that I've been posting on YouTube during the quarantine, you can show your appreciation by maybe throwing a dollar or two into my Venmo account at Adam slash, no, dash, Winrich on Venmo. Well, my name is Adam Winrich. Thanks for watching.